Um, and we have here uh, a student as well as uh, Marissa as employee of uh, our international office. Uh, so maybe you can uh, also very shortly introduce yourself. Sure. sure. <laughs> Go ahead, my young. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Mayank and I'm from India and currently I am pursuing my master's in shipping and transport. Uh, I started in September uh, this year uh, and going through the current batch. Uh, prior to this, I was a seafarer working as a marine engineer on board ships. So if any of the viewers have that kind of background and would like to ask something according to that, then I'll be happy to answer. And yeah, that's it from my side. Yes, I'm from India, so I'm an international student. <laughs> okay. Yeah, super. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. My name is Marissa. I work for the Center of International Affairs. Uh, if you have any practical questions, uh, feel free to ask. Yeah, and what we have is actually, uh, we have a, a video about um, uh, the program itself and a video more about um, uh, what students uh, think about the program uh, on this moment. So where we ask is the webinar itself about um, actually what's the program about. And then if you have some questions about that, uh, you can ask and otherwise we continue with the, with the next one. Um, so where I will start, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's interesting. Is one of you uh, able to start any video? Um, yeah, is it the first one? You have the webinar and you have the opleidings video. Yeah, I see opleidings video. Yeah, you can start with that one. So let me start to? Yeah. Hi. Hi. Yeah, I'm good. My name is Kenneth Guay. I am a Nigerian. I live here in Rotterdam. Hello, my name is Sika Vissers. Uh, I'm uh, from the Netherlands. I chose uh, this master degree program, Shipping and Transport, because uh, I've always been interested in uh, logistics, especially in the maritime sector. And this particular program is for professionals, so I, I, I felt it's, it's really going to um, expose me a lot into the technicals, into the, yeah, the commercial uh, part of it. So I, uh, I find it a perfect match for what I want to do in the future. I'm a seafarer um, and I know of myself that I won't be uh, sailing my entire life. So at one point I want to work um, in the harbour. So at the moment we have um, several classes uh, about hinterland, uh, economics and finance, personal development. And in these classes we learn more about how to do a business presentation as well as how to talk in front of a group. It teaches you all you need to know about the maritime, about the supply chain. So you, you cannot finish the course and not be very stable enough to take up challenges in the future. With this um, master we try to um, broaden our network within the maritime sector. So we have to write a portfolio and then we have to uh, make connections with several maritime industries and uh, businesses. Um, so I think that will really help in the future. So to be honest, I didn't really set certain expectations before starting the uh, program, but that's also because my best friend, he did the master last year. So he told me all about it and he really got me excited about the program. Um, the only thing I was maybe a little bit surprised about was uh, the amount of international students. So we have people from Brazil, Greece, Romania, uh, Norway, and even China, for example. So it brings a lot of uh, different aspects and, and different views about the world, um, which I think is very cool and interesting. We do a lot of real, real professional scenarios. You know, we call it integration cases, and it's, uh, it teaches you how to think fast and think 
technically, you know, because we have a problem that we need to solve right now. So it's uh, maybe a ship is stuck somewhere in the middle of the sea. So we need to uh, find a way to get this ship uh, moving again. So this kind of real life uh, scenarios. So you have to think technically, you have to think uh, fast. So I uh, find it interesting because it teaches you a lot. You know, you see how much you can uh, yeah, be, be strong to think fast and uh, solve a problem. We have a lot of great teachers um, who are very open about uh, answering questions about class or even things uh, outside of school. They showed me how to survive here in the Netherlands. Uh, you can imagine that it's a different world coming from uh, Africa. So they were really very supportive and I was really able to settle in uh, easily. Okay, that was the video, Chantal. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for playing it for us. Um, I try to come back to the... I think you do the same. Are there any questions about this uh, video on this moment? Um, and if not, I suggest that we play um, the next one. And I really think that I know now uh, how to start it as well. So I do it. Hi, my name is Sam Timlali, lecturer and researcher at Shipping and Transport Master Program at Rotterdam Mainport Institute. The dynamic, vibrant and lively Rotterdam is the house of our shipping and transport master program and hopefully soon your program as well. Not only is this English thought master your way to enrich and add to your pre-existing knowledge in the fields of shipping and maritime logistics, but also a source to learn valuable managerial skills that will accompany you for the rest of your career. As a matter of fact, this master is one of its kind in the Netherlands. As you probably have already read on the website, this master is offered within a University of Applied Sciences. You might be wondering what that exactly means. Well, in short, it means that all the learning objectives have been drawn up hand in hand with the current industry. At this master, we handle the learning process from two perspectives. From one perspective, you will learn many tried and true techniques from the field, such as cheaper and more sustainable transport. On the other perspective, you will discover innovative solutions that are actually implemented in the field. That is how we do it at the University of Applied Sciences. Stay close to the field and help develop it and implement changes. The assignment and projects within the master are designed in such a way to provoke and sparkle your problem-solving skills and motivate you to be critical and innovative. The main program is divided into four blocks. These blocks contain themes like economics and finance, operations, strategies, management, innovation and sustainability, and lastly, research. And all of these themes are linked to the maritime field. Speaking of research, it is where you will apply the knowledge and skills to a real life problem in the work field. We do not dwell long in hypotheticals. Your research findings are directly related to what is happening a couple of kilometers from here. Not only will the shipping and transport master help develop your career as a manager, but also as a person. At the end of the program, you would have identified your strengths, your weaknesses and aspirations, both on the professional level and personal level, alongside many different aspects. But most importantly, you would have had developed a plan of action to help yourself get better and achieve your goals. Of course, you will not be alone in this journey. You will be supervised and coached. Let us talk a bit about the program's specification and admission requirements. You can follow this master either in a one-year full-time status or in a two-year part-time status. The institute in which you'll follow the program is located in Rotterdam, home to Europe's largest port. The majority of lectures take place in the Loistraat, where the building is situated next to and with a very nice overview over the Maas River. In this building, all kinds of shipping and logistics programs are being taught. 
Like any other program, the master shipping and transport has some admission requirements. The most important being a bachelor degree in either engineering, shipping, logistics, or in a business related field. This requirement is for both Dutch as well as non-Dutch students. For non-Dutch students, an English proficiency test is also required. The tuition fees change every year. For more details on the program tuition fees and the requirements, we recommend you to visit the Master Shipping and Transport website. How about living expenses? These include housing, food, insurance, and transportation. Of course, that depends on your personal lifestyle. Please note that finding a student accommodation can be challenging at this point. Our website offers more information about all things related to the program. If you have any questions or inquiries, please send us an email to this email address. And I hope to see you soon. So, back on... Uh... On here, so that's actually every um, all the information about the the program, and I saw already some um, questions. One about um, um, admission requires uh, admission requirements, uh, a bachelor in maritime studies, and um, an all year um, all kind of things in uh, Pakistan. Um, do you know by head, Marissa, um, um, what kind of application skills there are for this master? Hey, yes. So I see a question from Kamar. Um, he has done a bachelor in maritime studies in Pakistan. Um, the most important thing is that your bachelor degree obtained in your in, in, in this uh, particular uh, country is equal to a Dutch HBO bachelor. Uh, I don't know that by heart for, for Pakistan, but uh, our admissions team um, can very easily check that for you. So um, I will actually put the Sorry. admissions email here in the chat. Um, it's very easy to send your application documents uh, and admissions can check uh, whether you're eligible for the program. Yeah. And my, and my young was a... Yeah, Kamar, so for Kamar, I would say that even I have done marine engineering, but it was a four-year course. So I, I'm not sure about the two years, what's the criteria for a two-year program which he has done in Pakistan. So as Marissa said, it would be better to send his profile to the admissions office and they would let him know. Yeah, because we have a lot of um, seafarers like my young, but also people from uh iran no, yeah, the netherlands um yeah there are people from turkey who was a seafarer he was a chief officer so yeah. we have i think five to six seafarers right now um and then if we're talking about uh requirements for the english oh yeah english english language um, I think the best thing is also, uh, I saw that, I think Marissa already put the admission requirements. Oh no, Ramon did. He's not here, but he's there uh, listening. Um, so you can see exactly what are the English requirements. But for actually all people outside the Netherlands, we have some. Yeah, I think as a non-European uh, candidate, you have to have IELTS. Uh, I also gave IELTS exam and you have to send your result to the university and that would make it much easier. Yeah. And it's out of my head. It's approximately 6.5. Yeah. Uh, yes, it was like six in three. And if you have 5.5 in one of the four uh, thing, then that, that should be okay. But yes, you should aim for 6.5. Yeah, totally true. Uh, and Vladislav, sorry if I didn't pronounce your name uh, that well, ask if there any dorm of accommodation is provided by university. Yeah, but uh, some already did tell us uh, during the webinar. Um, yeah, it's it's very difficult on this moment to find housing here in the Netherlands. Um, there are some a sort of provided by the university, but it's a very small amount for a very large group of uh, persons. Um, 
Ja, yeah, so that's an um, challenge. Yeah, and I think there's age criteria also. So if you are above 30, then you are not eligible for the student housing. In my case, last year it was this. So if you are above 30, then I think you should have to start looking for a house like four months prior to coming here. So yeah, it's tough. The living situation, the housing situation is really tough here. Yeah. Yeah, so start early is the only thing I think we can tell you. Um, yeah, yeah, and start before you coming to the Netherlands. That's also. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Marisa from the international um, office side, um, I know there are a lot of also webinars and um, uh, help from their side. Yes, we do have a full-time housing officer. Um, she did a webinar, I think, two weeks ago. It's already on YouTube. So if you go to YouTube, Rotterdam University of Applied Sciences, the webinar is there. Um, if you go to RotterdamUAS.com, if you type in accommodation, you'll find, the, you'll find the, the link uh, with the, all the tips and tricks and also a, a page with alternative housing providers. Um, then I see a um, question about how many days per week and hours per day we do, do you usually have classes for full-time students? Um, my young yes. no. <laughs> but, uh... Okay, so uh, for the first period we had like four weeks in a uh, four classes in a week, uh, four days in a week, and if for the second period it's three days in a week. But the thing is, the one day or two days the off you have been you have been given, it's because of the assignments. So it's not just to take rest, you know. So uh, you will have your cases and you, you have free time to solve it, you know. So it's like four days for first period and three days in the second period. So yeah. Yeah, but how many days do you approximately uh, study in the week? Uh, four days a week, and. Hours depend, you know, it's not uh, set. Uh, it's different every day. So maybe Monday your classes will start at morning 10 and then Tuesday it's 8.30. But you will be free by evening 5. So yeah. Yeah. not later than that. Not later than 5 in the evening. Gives you enough time to uh, have a you look at in Rotterdam. To organize your stuff and, you know, to go about your assignments. Yeah. Um. I hope that's enough um, answer for question. If not, uh, please, um, yeah, let uh, me know. Yes, please, if, if you're not satisfied with the answers, you can just type in and we'll try to answer it. Yeah. In more detail, you know. Yeah. And Jun asked what the big difference is between supply chain management and shipping. Um, I really believe um, if you're going to the supply chain uh, master program, it's really about logistics and supply chain. And what we are doing in the master shipping and transport is um, more on the port part and the shipping, shipping company part. Uh, so we, yes, we have the first 10 weeks about the maritime uh, supply chain. And there is one course uh, calling supply chain, but afterwards we're really going into the shipping companies and um, the decision you make in in shipping yes uh, like we had a supply chain management as a course in first period so you are going to study about the supply chain management but it's going to be just focused towards the ship and ports yeah you know, just towards the maritime industry but i think if you do masters in supply chain management you'll get general idea about all the industries so yeah, yeah that's really true yeah um, I see a question about the job opportunities. Um, yeah, we we have this program now for two of this the second year. We have this program in the Rotterdam University of Applied Science. Uh, but students graduated last year uh, from you know, outside the Netherlands who like to work here in the Netherlands within the logistics or the maritime um, uh, companies. They actually all have a job and that's very um, a broad view. So there are people who now working at um, uh, a frozen cargo, um, so a fruit terminal, but there are also people who have traineeships at the port of Rotterdam or um, um, the, um, uh, some container terminals. Uh, but what we see is everything of everybody who likes to stay here and to work here um, 
has the opportunity to get the job. Yes, and in addition to that, because you're in Rotterdam, it's a maritime city, you know. If you look at any shipping company, you will find their headquarters here in Rotterdam. Yeah. And uh, and for non-European, you also get uh, an orientation here, visa, uh, after you complete your master's. So the chances are very high uh, to get a job after your program. Yeah. And we, we, we really try, and um, I really like to hear from you, Mayank, how you uh, experience that on this moment. Um, but as we know that that a lot of you also looking for an opportunity to, to work here in the Netherlands in the maritime field, uh, we really try to uh, get you as much as possible in touch with the working field. Yes, and uh, I remember the week we joined here, we were having introductory week and on the third or fourth day we had the career event. So we got to meet so many companies and they were ready to offer, personally to me, they were companies, they were ready to offer me jobs. So I was pretty happy that the job scene is actually good here. And if you complete your master's and if, you know, you have the skills, uh, nobody can stop you from getting a job here. So, yeah. yeah. Um, Yuri asked if studying part-time it's required to have a relevant work of 20 hours a week or can I also work on the building side like I learned on several engineering and I think but Marissa correct me if I'm wrong that if you want to study part-time here in the Netherlands that the only thing you have to have is of course that you um, are applicable to the program uh, but that you have a visa that you can stay over here Um, yes, uh, this is about the part-time program, I assume. Um, yes, then you have to already have a visa, uh, or, uh, sorry, a residence permit. Um, and you should, yeah, so. Yeah, but if you're uh, applicable, so you have a civil engineering um, diploma and you live here in the Netherlands or work in the Netherlands and you have a visa that you can stay here, uh, okay, yeah, and I see now yeah, that's no problem at all. Yeah, uh, yeah. Then if you are applicable, you are more than welcome. We have now also in the part-time program um, a nurse uh, or a nurturing uh, person. Um, so we expect you if you take part of the part-time program that you're somewhere um, interested in the maritime world or see a future over there. Um, yeah, but that's no problem at all. Yeah. So we don't um, expect you to have relevant working experience. Um, and then I even don't try it. I think it's a, uh, no, I even say, but um, a question, uh, if you graduated from this course, there are exemptions of the Institute of Chartered Ship Brokers. Um, yeah, they are. I don't know by head, but if you go on the website of the Institute of Chartered Shipbrokers, um, there is somewhere a page that you can um, find exemptions from certain educational program, and there you can find what kind of uh, exemptions they are. There are. And in addition to that, uh, one of our lecturers uh, of transportation law, he is already a mem uh, member of. Institute of Chartered Ship Brokers. So, yeah. so he is in the Rotterdam uh, chapter of the society, and we are ex exempted of few subjects. And I cannot remember because I haven't looked into it. But yes, of course, if uh, we send our degree and they look at the subjects we have studied, so I think two or three subjects we don't have to write the exam. Yeah, but. yeah, it's something like that. Yeah. yeah, yes, indeed. Yeah. Are there more questions? If I look to the viewers, I see uh, some of you um, ask questions, but I didn't see any questions of Dewey to Verutger of, I don't know if your name is really Rock, but then of Rock. I don't think I see any questions of Yuri and of Spartacus. Oh, things are coming. Um, Oh, a very good one. If I apply, when are the admission results will be known? 
Yes, usually it takes the admissions team four to six weeks to process your application. Um, currently, they're quite fast for February, but September is the big intake. So then it's really four to six weeks that they're, uh, they're busy with it. Um, so, yeah, that's the, the timeline that you can expect. Yeah, and it's, of course, a bit depending if you are, sorry, um, from, um, no, yeah, say far away. So if there's a check, you need to check on your diploma or you need a visa. Um, yeah, then we can say as a uh, hogeschool that, that you are admissionable, but that's then also depending in, of course, uh, getting a visa or uh, that kind of stuff. So when you think you want to, uh, to study over here, uh, please uh, apply as soon as possible. I think that's the only, uh, how do we say it? Raad, yeah, we can give you. Um, and then the kind of asset assignments. Um, now, yeah, Mayanka knows, yeah. um, knows something about what's happening on this moment. And then I can say something about what we're planning for the future. I think that's a good uh, combination. Okay, so the kind of assignments is it's uh, more on the group assignment side. It's like if we have five uh, courses, then we have exam for like only two of them. And for three, we have to submit a group assignment. So you are divided into a group and you are assigned a port or maybe any other topic. And then you get uh, one period to, you know, uh, write about it, write a paper with your team. So it's more about building a team spirit. And, you know, because in corporate sector, we are going to work in a team. So you have to have that cooperation kind of thing, you know. So, yes, it's more of group assignments. And uh, I think in the third period, it's just group assignment. And the last period is the thesis. So, yes. Yeah, totally true. Um, and that won't change. We will make the, um, the amount of assignments upcoming period of upcoming years a bit less. Um, and now there are still some written examinations in place and we will hopefully get rid of them um, and combine the courses which are now separated a bit more on the same. But it's, um, I, I really think, yeah, same as now that the most are a sort of reports you have to do. Yeah. Um, I hope that answers your question, Joey. And if not, uh, please let us know. And then Yuri says, so I live in the Netherlands and I graduate with a bachelor degree on the Hochschule. Furthermore, English exams won't be required to start as master. And I think he's right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Totally right. Ah, and about the holidays. Some people who like uh, to have holidays, of course. Um, we all do, I think. Um, yeah, and what I would say we just have the normal, um, uh, what do, yeah, the, the normal school holidays in the Netherlands. Um, so we have a week in the autumn. We just had it two weeks ago. We have two weeks uh, during Christmas and we have say approximately a week somewhere in spring. Uh, and then we go into the summer holiday. So yeah, uh, um, during the master program, just um, yeah, in Dutch, the normal holidays are uh, are there. Uh, my young, do you yeah. think they are more than? No, I think uh, it's the autumn break which we just had, and then yeah, as you said, uh, two weeks in Christmas, and because it's a one-year program, so. You know, you will get a lot of breaks in between so, and you won't even get to know when the one year is over. <laughs> so, yeah, And then you have like seven days or eight days break in Feb, uh, which again starts in like second week of March. And by the uh, by, by the August is the official deadline of the program. So, yeah. yeah. Um, and Rutger asked how many students are expected in February for the master? Um, and then my question is a bit, do you mean uh, upcoming February or do you mean um, uh, maybe in future? And hopefully say something now. 
uh, and otherwise I just explain. Um, for the upcoming February, we expect or not we expect, um, we have uh, at least, yeah, 25 Indonesian students, uh, which coming here, sent it by the transport of the Ministry of Transport from Indonesia. Uh, next to that, we expect, no, yeah, at least five persons um, um, next to it. So if you really like, um, yeah, it, maybe it's a bit strange to say, but but if you really like the the, the experience with more cultures and more kind of uh, persons. I really think you can better start in September because I think it's more fun because these 25 Indonesian people know each other already. Yeah. Um, but we will have a class of around 30 persons. Yes, and I can I expect that at some point February intake will be more diverse also in terms of uh, nationality. Um, but yeah, this one is going to be a little bit less diverse. So yeah, I, I agree that... Um, if you consider February or September 23, I would for now go for September 23. Yeah, I think it will be yeah. Yeah, a nice experience. Yeah. Um, okay. Oh, I, I'll answer Joey's part here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of, uh, yeah. yeah. I think you got me wrong, Joey. Uh, uh, from group assignment, what I meant is, you, you have to write your papers. So uh, maybe if there are 10 topics, so you do, if it's a group of five people, so you have to write your two parts and it has to be backed by a lot of thesis and scientific articles. So please don't think that you don't have to write. <laughs> no, yeah, and... And, um... and even if you have to just write two parts, but for your thesis, you have to write the whole thesis. You know? yeah. So, yeah. You, you have to read a lot of scientific articles, theses, and books, and you have to write a lot. Yeah, sadly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, other than that, it's a very fun program. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah, we, we're still a master program, so um, yeah, you need to, to read a lot and to write a lot and, and to be independent also on that one. Um, so no, I, I really think it's in the master program, it's a sort of practical program, but yes, um, yeah, we cannot say that you and, don't need to write. To that, it's like you write your part and every week you get feedback from your lecture. So it's not like, you know, they have left you <laughs> every week. If you you if they want you to add something, they will let you know and you can contact them anytime. So everybody is out there to help you. Yeah. So. Yeah. Joey, we are now very curious which master you're doing uh, right now, of course. Uh, so maybe you can write it down. Um, Hussein, yeah, I don't, I don't know how to pronounce. So ask my bachelor was in 100% English. So should I prove my English level with exams? Um, yeah, that's. I think so, but um, that's depending on where you're from. Um, so, and de depending on your diploma. So the only thing I can do is have a look on the application website because then you're, no, yeah, to see exactly um, uh, no, yeah, what, what you need. Um, Yuri asked, do I also process a lot of practical education like sailing on a ship or go on an awesome excursion? Um, no, yeah, you, <laughs> <laughs> you only had yesterday one awesome ex uh, excursion, my young, but I uh, understood they uh, s s had a strike in the port of Antwerp. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately they had a strike, but yes, there are many excursions, not, uh, there are excursions. Uh, on the on our first introductory week, uh, we went to the port of Rotterdam, and yesterday our batch went to port of Antwerp in Belgium. So yes, there are excursions, and there are people coming from the industry. It's not just the lecture, you know. So we had uh, people coming from port of Rotterdam, uh, people coming from with the background of marine insurance, and you know, just talking to us 
for an hour or so and sharing their experiences. So. Yeah, and as program, we try that if you start with a new uh, semester, that we give you, we try to give you with an excursion the insight of what will happen over there. Um, yeah, uh, sailing on a ship is a bit uh, difficult. Um, but you will sail on a boat, I think, in your intro introductory week yeah. <laughs> for like 15 minutes. Yeah, but even then, uh, if a class has a sp specific question, uh, we as program can uh, yeah, try to make it happen together with you. Yeah. Because if we have a class uh, in the class of Mayanka, there are a lot of sailors. Uh, but if we have a class with no sailors at all, I can imagine that we say, okay, um, yeah, let, let's go on a, on a vessel or uh, something like that. Uh, and the best part is uh, studying. We, we will be based in STC building and we have our own uh, training ship. So <laughs> it yeah. would be easier to arrange ship visits, you know. Yeah, totally true. Yeah. Uh, Joey is now doing the master supply chain management at uh, in Breda. Yeah, Joey, we have, of course, a master supply chain management here in Rotterdam as well. Uh, and Marissa, I think you know uh, the content of it. Um, but I don't know. Yes. It's I'm a bit, uh, bit, bit disappointed now. <laughs> you know some Breda over Rotterdam. <laughs> no, or uh, very happy that uh, somebody would change from Breda to, uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I don't think there are that much um, differences on this moment as well between the supply chain management program and uh, this program, aren't it, uh, Marissa, about writing and... Uh, I think in terms of content, not so much. The only thing is, of course, that we're in Rotterdam, so it's quite easy for us to connect with the with the ports and with all the companies that are based here. Yeah, and and I think um, I don't know how uh, many students are studying on the supply chain uh, master in Breda, but supply chain master here in Rotterdam is it's much bigger on this moment than our master. So I think in the shipping and transport master on this moment, it's more personal. Um, yeah. Um, Kamar asks, what are the possibility for jobs in insurance related fields like P&A clubs, etc.? Um, yeah, that's an interesting uh, question, uh, Kamar. I really think that it's uh, up to your um, uh, background. And uh, yeah, I think he's he's sailing on uh, chemical tankers. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, oh yeah, it was the uh, game called tanker. Yeah, guy, you're totally right. Uh, yeah. there, there are many opportunities. Uh, uh, like la in last period, uh, there was a guy who who is working in marine insurance, and he came uh, for our law lecture. So of course there are opportunities, uh, and if it's one of the segment you're interested in, you could apply, and you know, yeah, you can get into it. Yeah. I. I really think that uh, there are enough insurance um, uh, companies or uh, expert um, agencies who are looking for surveyors. Um, yeah, so I don't see if you are interested in that when why there are no jobs in that. Uh, yeah, okay. kind of, um, how do you say it, um, segment. Yeah. Um, but yeah, of course you understand as well that the, the real p &I clubs uh, are in, in London. Uh, Besides of the uh, ICS, we don't have really connections with them, but also here in Rotterdam, uh, we have a lot of insurance companies uh, and all kinds of bureaus uh, who are dealing with this kind of stuff. Yeah, and who knows when, when you, you know, when, when I was starting my program, I just knew a few things. Okay, I would like to do this after my program, but when you get into this and you get to learn, there are so many fields out there. Yeah? Uh, there's chartering, there is insurance, there is port management, there's terminal management, and then you get you you have to keep your mind open. And you know there are opportunities in all the fields, but I think you should keep yourself open to all of all of the opportunities. Um. 
Vladisla, I, I um, try to pronounce it again. Uh, the February intake, uh, it's not possible anymore to apply if you're outside uh, the Netherlands. Yeah. And if you are inside the Netherlands, it's still, you're still able to apply till the 1st of December? 1st of Jan, if you're EU. Yeah, so EU students can still apply, non-EU students uh, can no longer apply. But of course, you can already apply for September. Yeah, very well. Uh, but the class is never full, so everybody uh, is welcome. Uh, yeah, everybody. The more, the better. Yeah. Um, are there any more questions? Do you want us to tell something? I don't know. Do you want to know my young experiences? Do you know from Marissa where the general student um, has to take care of before starting? Do you want something for me? Uh, and then I see two more questions. Uh, is the study very individual or do we have to work a lot in groups? Uh, you have to work in groups, and, but the individual part comes out when you're writing your thesis. So there's a very well-maintained balance, you know. Uh, in thesis, you have full control over everything and in group you learn how to coordinate, you know, because we have like certain word restriction, you have to complete your paper in like 10 pages and you have to fight with your group. Okay, I, I need one more page, I need half paragraph more. So yeah, it's it's both. It's the individual and the group both. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think that's a good, uh, yeah, what we like as program as well. Yeah, um, yeah. and that's it. Um, just to, um, oh, one more question again. Um, so EU students can still apply until the end of September for the February intake. And Rutger asked, is it common that someone from a business administration, so, so business administration study follows this master? Um, yeah, and I can say, yes, it, it really is. We have a lot of seafarers like my young, we have some logistics persons, but we really have, also, uh, no, I really think one third of all kind of business administration persons. In, in, in the group right now, we have around five to six people who have bachelors in business. Yeah. Uh, bachelors in business and economics. So, and they are doing the program. Yeah, uh, totally true. Yeah, economics, uh, finance, uh, but also no, more uh, business, business. Um, kind of related. Yeah, so um, yeah, it is common. I think we can say that. Yeah. And you're very welcome because we really like the, um, uh, yeah, that we have people from all kind of uh, backgrounds. Yes. Uh, Yuri asks, is the thesis exactly the same as my thesis on the bachelor? Take a problem case, investigate, and then write the hell out of it. <laughs> Um, yeah, in general, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I haven't started it, but yes, I have to write the hell out of it. <laughs> I remember that. Um, yeah, so it's more about, you know, looking at the current challenges the maritime industry is facing, you know, with the new regulations or anything uh, in which you are interested. And then you try to solve that challenge, you know, and yeah, yeah, totally true. Um, I think the difference between what you did on the, of, I hope the difference between what you did on your bachelor and what we ask here in the master program is that the literature, literature, so literature review is more profound and also the methodology and your data results are, um, yeah, how do we say it? Uh, more scientific, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's more technical, and then you have to get the data from a company. From a company, yeah, you know, it's just not you go on Google and get the data. So it has to be live data from a company, and then you have to solve that problem for the company. Yeah. So we we make it a bit more specific than in the batch of 
not specific, scientific than in the bachelor. And what we also do is what we see in the most of the bachelors that you take one problem from one uh, uh, company. But when we say, okay, yeah, that's okay if you take one problem from one company, but we want to, your view on if it's that what it means for that company, what does it mean then for actually all the companies in that field? Mm -hmm. So we make it a broader conclusion. Um, yeah, hope that um, says enough. Uh, and then we have the, um, all the deadlines for the February and September intake. So Marissa answered that. Um, Kamar asked, as an international student, what preparation should we do before coming there for this program? Any useful tips? And I led that to Mayanka Marissa. The, the, I think you find a place to live. <laughs> that That's the most important thing. You know? yeah. And there are many uh, sites like Housing Anywhere. I found a place on Housing Anywhere. So you can use those online platforms. And as Marissa said that uh, there's a housing officer, you can write an email and they would help you out. So housing should be your priority. Yeah. Yeah, any, any, um, so, um, Anne Verlinge, Marissa, sorry. Yes, sorry, I um, posted the link to the website uh, in the chat. Yeah. Yeah, and also uh, go to our, um, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Yuri. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes struggling uh, in your head with words. Uh, also our, um, Rotterdam University of Applied Science uh, website uh, gives a lot of information about how to prepare. And also if you apply, you get all kinds of information from our international office, uh, what to do and where to think about. Um, Joey asks, is the mo master more focused on operations or strategic, strategic subjects? Yeah, what we really do, uh, yeah, and, and you, Hopefully you see the same. What we try is, is that students get an overview of the operational processes and by that can make strategic decisions. Yes, correct. Uh, you make the foundation, you know, you understand the basics of finance, basics of interim economics and basics of port management. So when, when once you have your foundation and through the assignments, you have to think analytical because assignments they will give and in the integration case, they will give you a a technical problem and then you have to you know strategize a solution towards it so yeah it's it's both i think the operations and strategic both yeah yeah that's what we're trying to so that you get the the yeah the operational processes in in the port in the terminals in the shipping companies and that's that's the basics for making the strategic decisions if you are in 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 a certain place or in a certain company or in a certain position Yes. Uh, then Rutger asked how easy it is to find a graduation internship for the master's degree. Um, yeah, um, where we're working on is that um, we have certain subjects in place where our lecturers are doing research. Uh, so you can... Um, doing research by them. And next to that, you can find your own company uh, where you can do uh, research. But yeah, on this moment, uh, now yeah, the class of my young is... is, is um, okay, so uh, yeah, we, we, have, we, have, we will start the process uh, now, you know, in the second period. So all of our lecturers have a very good networking in Rotterdam and uh, I told my lecturer the topic I'm interested in, and she has already sent me the name of the company and the name of the person who can help me in writing my thesis. So yes, there, there's a good networking here. And I, and as I went into the career even in the introductory week, I've got so many net, net, uh, networks. And when I told them I, I have to write the thesis and they gave me their cards. So you just have to write an email and 
if in, uh, nothing works then the lecturers always have connection with the people yeah. in the industry so yes yeah so on this moment i yeah maybe if we grow to 200 students but that's not the case on this moment it's it's yeah. it shouldn't be difficult to find a, an internship or what we actually do is not saying it's a really an internship but you're doing your thesis uh, and it can be internally uh, and you have to find data outside of you do it into a company um, for a couple of weeks. Um, yeah, but, but it all seems um, very doable. Yes. Uh, Yuri asks if the thesis is only 15 ECTS is spending 420 hours, well calculated, in a thesis not very short. Yeah, Yuri, I think yeah, you have to think about that this master program is only a year and we also want to le learn you more than doing a thesis. Um, yeah, so maybe it's uh, it's short, but um, yeah. Yeah, I think it's, it's not a pure master of science, you know, not a very theoretical two years masters. So you don't have that much time uh, to actually, you know, you have to learn uh, so many things and then you have to write thesis on addition of that. And looking, we just have 12 months and in which we have three breaks <laughs> and, you know, it, it would be very difficult. So everything has been structured so that it becomes more doable. You know? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, as program director, I don't think 15 ECTS is uh, very short in a, in a year's program uh, because we like to, to teach you all kind of things. Um, yeah. 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 I think that's the answer on this. Uh, and then uh, a question about the core ship broking and chartering. Will there be a dub study or just familiarization? Um, my young, uh, I think you're. Yeah, we, we actually have a full course named ship chartering, and we will just start in this this period. So in the previous period, we studied the basics of maritime law, and now when we know all the terms, all the definitions and how, how the law works now, because ship charting involves a lot of transportation law. And now in the second period, we'll have a full fledged course, uh, ship chartering. So it's not just the familiarization because I'm pretty sure we'll have a assignments and exam. Uh, we have a written exam for ship chartering, if I'm not wrong. So yes, it's not just the familiarization. You will get to learn the subject uh, really well. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and on this moment, it's on the law side, but I know that uh, this lecture has good uh, connections also with uh, some uh, brokering and chartering um, uh, companies here in the port of uh, Rotterdam. So there will be some guest lectures. Um, yeah, and the, the question of deep study or just familiarization, I found it a bit difficult because of course it's course, I think now it's three ECTS. So it's only take you, um, now yeah, say 80 hours. Um, so yeah, a deep study in 80 hours, maybe that's not sufficient enough, um, but we will try to give you um, now the start if you want to deepen your uh, knowledge about it, that you want to know where to start. And if you want to work in it, uh, for example, in the future, um, that you also know the, the companies about it. And that was the end of our question list on this moment. Um, are there any more questions? Are there... I don't know, any remarks, any, um, are the answers sufficient? At this moment, it's, it's still yeah, think, in the chat. Yeah, <laughs> do, you, do you want to add something, my young? Uh, why should you uh, say to this, uh, um, viewers uh, listening uh, uh, please come to this uh, program yeah okay so in my personal opinion i worked for like seven or eight years and then i have joined this program and there's not a single day i have regretted it the location the stc building itself you know and on top of that you have the combination of thesis assignments and all the subjects which i wanted to study personally it, uh, I found everything there in the program. So 
with the mix of excursion and as yuri was worried about it just writing 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 so you will have a lot of fun because it it will be a very diverse group we have like eight or 10 nationalities seven to eight nationalities here and yes so it won't be a regret for anyone of you if you decide to come here yeah. thank you um I see last question and Yuri asked for my thesis innovating and optimizing optimizing a ferry line would be a very interesting subject. Is that possible to manage? Yeah, I think that's um yeah, that should be one of the sort of questions um, um which you can have in our uh, program. So uh, okay. yeah. Of course, I mean we we in the first period we studied about the cruise ship management uh, in our port management. So how are you going to manage cruise ships and ports? Uh, we had a, a small part regarding to it. And yeah, I think I will take your topic for my thesis. <laughs> Just kidding. you. <laughs> it's going to be, you can start and then you yeah. can finish it uh, next year. Uh, yeah. yeah, go further on the topic. Yeah. Um, yeah, next to this, I see uh, all um, kind of uh, thank you uh, messages. Uh, Marisa, is there something you would like to add, which you say that's very well to notice? Uh, and it was not over here yet. I think it was very clear. Um, I think what's, what makes us unique is the location. Uh, Rotterdam is Europe's largest sports city, so it's really perfect uh, for this program. Um, we have a very international classroom, super valuable also for after graduation and also something that companies value a lot. So um, EU students can still apply for February. Uh, otherwise, make sure to apply for uh, September 23. Application starts in studylink.nl. Thank you. Yeah, and for me, thank you all to uh, to view this webinar. We have some uh, upcoming in uh, January. Um, we have some physical appointments. Yeah, the open days maybe also. Yeah, um, and the next one, do you know by head? It's February 11th, I think. We have them announced on our website, of course. Um, and in april and in june also in the evening but if does not that does not fit you please send an email uh to koya and they come to us and we make an uh, yeah an, definitely an, yeah a personal um, appointment um and on the open days you find my young or one of his uh, fellow students uh, to see you uh, yeah. yeah, I would love, love to meet you guys if, if you plan to come. Yeah, and same for me. And I would love to show you around in this uh, actually magnifique building on the border of the mass. Uh, yes, and in addition to that, the next uh, physical open day is on Saturday, February 11th. Yeah. Okay. So be welcome. I think between 10 and 2 o'clock in the yeah. afternoon. Yeah. Um, yeah, so thank you very much. It was very nice to have you here. Um, uh, the international office, so Marissa, one of her colleagues, will send you this webinar um, uh, in movie form so you can watch it back. Um, and also the websites will be updated with the webinar movies. So if you like to, you can um, watch them back. All kind of Questions can be sent to the um, uh, and you is to send another a question. I will answer the uh, latest. Uh, all other questions can be sent to the email uh, Marisa said in the chat, Koya Recruitment at erp.nl. Uh, but please mention that there is on the website of not yeah on the website is also a chat. So if you chat there your question, it will come to the right persons as well. So thank you. Uh, have a good evening, a good day, or wherever you're from. Uh, what time it is? Um, something like that. Um, yeah, and we hope really to see you or in February already or in September upcoming years.
Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you guys and we are looking forward to meet you in the open day or maybe next year you know, when I'm passing out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hopefully, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and Yuri, uh, coming back on your question, uh, I am a CMA member on Hochschool following a minor and then I'm a bit doubting on CMA. Oh, and I think Marisa is... Uh, are you yes, there? sorry, I'm still here. Sorry. Um, you know the um, abbreviation of CMR? Medezeggenschapsraad, I think. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, but Yuri, what's your question exactly? Because you're... I'm confused now. <laughs> you're, do you're studying here at uh, Hochschool Rotterdam, probably. That's what you mean, I think. Yeah, then you're a student. I don't know what you mean exactly. Okay, yeah, yeah. Now I understand. Yeah, but um, I don't understand your question, Yuri. Do you mean by CMR, the Central Meegezeggenschapsraad? Is that your question? Because if that's your question, then I think the answer is yes. Yeah, I think Yuri already answered his own question, right? Ah, okay. Oh, uh, yes, I think so, isn't it? Sure, why not? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because the master is, is part of the Hochschool Rotterdam. Yeah. Yeah, so welcome. <laughs> Yeah. 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 D d d different um, different study, but also uh, yeah, study on the Hochschool Rotterdam. So that doesn't make any difference between a bachelor or a master or an associate degree. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. And if there are no questions left, um, for the last time, I would thank you. Have a great evening, day, uh, or whatever, and um, hope to see you. And thanks to you, uh, Marissa and my young as well. Thank you, Chandra. Yes, of course. Thanks, bye everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank bye. You. I hope to see you soon.